Welcome back to another lecture wrap-up series. This is on lecture number 13 before Engineering 17, Section 2 here at UC Davis in the spring quarter 2014. Okay, so in this lecture sort of initiates or begins the uh, outlook into using al alternating current sources, AC sources, or in general what we would just call sinusoidal sources, meaning that the source voltage or current is uh, following basically some sine, sine function, which are, we will represent with the cosine function. So before getting into that side of things, we also in this lecture recapped uh, just from your appendix B and your textbook regarding complex numbers. So again, just want to remind yourself of these things which you've uh, uh, hopefully seen before in your prior math and or physics classes. Remembering, you know, we generally express things in terms of, re of, re of a rectangular form, which have, have this sort of function uh, or form z equals a plus jb, this imaginary component uh, j. Uh, but we can also translate that into a polar form, where such as that takes this form of z equals c times exponential to the j times uh, theta. So in this case, the, we get the c, we can uh, transform from the rectangular to the polar coordinate system by giving c the value of the root of a squared plus b squared and the tangent of this angle theta is going to be equal to b over a. So this sort of figure basically shows you how that works out in that we're taking the rectangular form here, mapping it out onto a coordinate system. You see that c is simply going to be the magnitude basically of that vector representation more or less in the rectangular system and the angle there is just um, yeah, where that vector is in, re in respect to time with respect to the, or with respect to the x-axis specifically. Okay, so you want to re-familiarize yourself with the um, complex numbers and also the algebra that's involved in adding and subtracting, multiplying polar uh, coordinate uh, in the polar coordinate system because that will all be used for what we're going to do with the sinusoidal sources. Okay, so getting into, we just covered two sections in this lecture specifically from chapter nine in your text. So initially giving you the outlook for what a sinusoidal source is. Okay, so it has, in general we will use this form here such that the V, the, the voltage from the sinusoidal source is gonna be equal to V sub M times cosine of omega T plus phi. Okay, so notice that we are going to use the cosine, uh, the cosine function to represent our source even though we call them sinusoidal sources, so technically we can represent them as either sines, sine functions or cosines, those they're only separated in phase by nine degrees, but for a variety of reasons, we don't want to use the cosine function notation, so this is generally how we will denote things here. So again, to remind yourself, Vm is gonna be your maximum amplitude, so this could, could be an, an example of a given source, so of course Vm would be the, a, a given amplitude of a single, uh, hill in this case here. Uh, cosine, in the cosine function you have omega, which is that angular frequency, which is re related to the regular frequency uh, through the two pi f. So omega equals two pi f there. And so that will tell you that the frequency will then dictate what the period is, okay? And again, the period is the distance in time with in between two, two peaks or two valleys in this case of the sine function. And then you have this phase component here, which, t which will shift this function across the time axis in one way or direction, one way or another, based on the phase angle, okay? Another term we pointed out was the root mean square, so we, which uh, denoted as RMS, V sub RMS, is simply gonna be the maximum amplitude divided by the square root of two. That'll come in handy in uh, doing further uh, analyses down the road. Okay, now looking at, we looked at a general response, we'll get more into this in future lectures, but uh, if we have a given sinusoidal source in a circuit, in this case with a inductor and a resistor, and here we're looking at the step response, of course, because we are in the closing a switch at some time t equals zero, so initially it's open, assume everything's relaxed and, and there's no uh, built up charge or anything. Uh, or stored energy, and you close that switch, and then you see what happens. So we went through the process of how we uh, evolved that solution, but the general form uh, takes what we see here, which you don't need to 
where this is all in your book to write out the specifics. I won't go to it, I won't go through it in detail, except to say that there are two components to the response from a sinusoidal source. There's both the transient component, okay, which will be the first term here, and then there's going to be the steady state component. So a couple of things to notice is that the transit component has this exponential decay term. So again, this just evolves from the fact that, again, this is still a, a step response in this case, but it would be similar um, for natural response type case. And so this will has that decay term, which comes into the fact that it's only going to be for some number of uh, time constant periods, so it's considered a transient. Whereas the steady state, so eventually, in this case, uh, as the switch is closed, the whole circuit will eventually reach its steady state component where you'll need, you will notice that the response of the, uh, in the circuit in general, the frequency is not going to change. So omega here is going to be the same as the omega from this VS or source here. Uh, but the phase could change. It could be some phase shifting uh, due to the fact specifically from this inductor here we would see the sim a similar thing as we get into looking at capacitors in the circuit as well. And um, so that's just a couple of general notes to look at in using the sinusoidal sources in given circuits. And we'll, of course, we'll be getting more into this in coming lectures. This is just how we got uh, so far in our lecture today. So that about wraps up to at least introduce you to using these new types of sources in our circuits. And we'll look at these more in detail in future lectures. As always, stay classy.